Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Marcel Plays RCT2. Last week we did Forest Frontier, so this week we're going to do the next one, which is Dynamite Dunes. As the name suggests, this scenario is set in a desert and unlike Forest Frontiers, the park isn't completely empty. You start out with a mine train coaster called Dynamite Blaster, which is quite decent and looks really good. The goal of this scenario is to get 650 guests and a park rating of at least 600 at the end of year 3, which isn't very difficult, so the challenge here comes from building a good looking park. Once again, the first ride that I built was a merry-go-round, and I decorated it with palm trees, fountains and a nice fence going around it. After this, it's time for a tracked ride, but not yet a roller coaster. Instead, I'm going to build a nice log flume to give guests the ability to cool off a bit in the scorching hot sun in the desert. Because the first scenery theme that you unlock in this scenario is the classical Roman one, the log flume gets a Roman theme. I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm just placing random scenery stuff all over the place, but I think it ends up looking quite nice. In Roller Coaster Tycoon 1, you can charge for both the entrance and the ride at the same time, instead of only just one of the two, like in RCT2. In Forest Frontiers, I only charged for the ride, so now I'm going to do the opposite and only charge for the entrance. At this point, we can't charge too much yet, so 10 bucks will have to do. Now it's roller coaster time, and the first one will be a wooden roller coaster. My idea here was to really integrate it into the hill and make it go in and out of it several times. Because this is a roller coaster tycoon 1 scenario, this classic wooden coaster is a lot more limited than the roller coaster tycoon 2 version of the wooden coaster. It doesn't have steep turns or sloped banked turns, and the banking that you can do is also less extreme. If you're playing Open RCT2, these less banked turns do give the same amount of lateral G forces as the standard banked turns. By the time the coaster was finished, we unlocked the Egyptian theme, so this ride will be Egyptian themed. Halfway during the construction of this little thing with the fountains, we encountered a problem, and that is that we ran out of money. The coaster was quite expensive to build, and we have already maxed out the loan at 15,000 euros. Another issue is that the amount of guests is already at the soft guest cap, so new guests spawn extremely sporadically. We are still making money but it's very little and it would be quite stupid to spend that all on scenery so I stopped decorating the wooden coaster for now. Instead I spent all the money we got on a few very tiny steel mini coasters to increase the soft guest cap. The entry price is 40 bucks by now and each of these attracts 55 guests so they can at least make 2200 euros each. With a cost of only a few hundred they are quite profitable. After having built 4 steel mini coasters, a few stalls and a few staff members, we can finally finish decorating the wooden coaster. This is pretty much the same idea of just putting random scenery items around the ride and hoping it will look good, which it luckily does. That's one of the great things about this game, you don't need to be an expert in scenery to make something good looking. Knowing that we need a lot of ride to increase the soft guest cap, I decided to build 6 spiral slides in a row and color them in a rainbow pattern. Why a rainbow? Because rainbows are beautiful, that's why. After this, it's time to build a proper steel mini coaster. The main difference between this and the junior coaster from Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 is that this one has access to steep slopes and small level to steep transition pieces. To me, it seems like these don't really belong on a children oriented coaster type like this, but the game allows me to use them, so I will. For the decoration I went with a simple pond surrounded by some bushes and a few cacti scattered around. It's nothing crazy, but if we use a similar theme for other rides and areas, it will make the park look very cohesive. After having built a few flat rides in the space between the log flume and the spiral slide, it's time to build the second tracked ride on the hill, a car ride. I don't have too much to say about this ride, except that I find that the dark orange color complements the color of the sand really, really well. 
Because the soft guest cap will be a problem again soon, a second rainbow appeared on the opposite side of the steel mini coasters, this time in the form of ferris wheels. Because there are 8 of them instead of 6, we get an extra dark red and dark purple color on the far sides. With the second rainbow complete, it's time for the third and final ride on the big hill, a go-kart. It's quite a dangerous ride as you will sustain serious injuries if you go over the edge of the track and tumble down the slope, but that just adds to the excitement. It is called a thrill ride after all. With the hill being fully built on and decorated, I built 6 fruity Isis stalls in a row next to it. Why? Because in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 you could actually change the color of this stall, so it's time for another rainbow baby. We have now unlocked the stand-up coaster, which had a launched mode in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, so we can recreate the micro corkscrew design. It attracts slightly fewer guests than the corkscrew does with 90 instead of 100, but it is also slightly cheaper, so they're about as good as each other. The land that's for sale allows us to build exactly 4 stand-ups in a row next to the already existing path, attracting another 360 guests. Before we continue this bit of the park, I'm going to build a proper stand-up coaster next to the proper steel mini coaster. It was quite a bit of trial and error to figure out this design and I wanted to build a corkscrew through the vertical loop but I couldn't manage to line it up properly. I'm fairly happy with the final design and even though it has a high intensity rating the stats are decent for a stand-up coaster. With this done we can continue the other side of the park and build the worst coaster type in the entire game. The mini suspended coaster. With it being the worst, I mean in terms of stats and other functionality, as it does score fairly high on appearance. I didn't have much inspiration for decorating it yet, so for now all it gets is a colosseum and a row of flower beds with alternating colors. Earlier we built knockoff micro corkscrew coasters in the form of stand up coasters, but now we have unlocked the real corkscrew coaster, so you know what time it is. Four of these in a square looks actually quite cool, like some sort of animal with four green tentacles. Someone should write some hentai involving this. I suddenly gained some inspiration for decorating the mini suspended coaster as we just unlocked the mining theme. A bit of dirt terrain with some mining huts on it and some barrels strewn about looks pretty good, especially next to the already existing excavation site of the mine train coaster. A while ago we unlocked the swinging suspended coaster, which might just be my least favorite coaster type in the game to build with. It's bulky, it's ugly and it doesn't have great stats, so naturally I decided to build one in the far corner of the park. While building it I got a notification that a train on the mine train coaster hadn't returned to the station yet, so I looked and I found the train stuck somewhere on the track. This sometimes happens on this design when a breakdown occurs when a train is at a specific point, and to solve it I simply double closed and reopened the ride. Despite my aversion to the swinging suspended coaster, I'm quite happy with how this design turned out. One thing I do like about the ride is that the trains are so long that you can implement ultra steep lift hills with an entire steep track piece in between two chain lift pieces. In the end, it's a fairly compact coaster with lots of trees and cacti as decoration. This empty bit of land next to it is perfect for two twists with mirrored queue lines. With the land we currently have, there is one more empty section that we can build a coaster on. Out of the seven available coaster types, the only one we don't have a big design of yet is the corkscrew, so a corkscrew it is. I struggled with this design quite a bit, especially near the end, as connecting it to the station in a nice way was tricky. Eventually I got it to work and went with the same basic scenery strategy of palm trees and cacti that I used for other coasters. The stats aren't fantastic, partly due to some high lateral g-forces, but they're good enough. Now the park is mostly finished, but we still have some time left and a few spots just feel a bit unfinished to me. First I built some balloon stalls, because balloons add a lot of color to the park. I also built two more rides, a spiral slide downhill from the corkscrew coaster and a ferris wheel next to the park entrance. 
Lastly, it's time for a lot more scenery, starting with the chain link fence around the hole that the dynamite blaster is built in. Next, I built some pine trees around the mini sus to enhance its mining theme, and I also added a lot of palm trees and cacti around the park. My favorite things that I added are the little bits of other scenery scattered throughout the park. There is this giraffe, a few wooden tunnels, some flower beds around the mini steel minis, these Roman temples and this horse statue. It's details like this that give a park character and makes it feel like there's always more to discover. And with that done, the end of year 3 is rapidly approaching. With over 3 times the number of required guests and a park rating of 999, it's safe to say that we have easily beaten the scenario. I think this is a really good example of incorporating some small optimized rides to help you reach the goal while also keeping it looking good and true to the original spirit of the game. If you want to watch the Forest Frontiers episode, you can click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.